What's up everyone, I just wanna jump on here real quick to give you a quick behind the scenes of my most recent post that you guys saw. It was that interview shot of um, a professor from Chicago, Uni University of Chicago, um, Adam. Um, I was hired by um, the producer, Kevin um, Tobin. He's uh, directing this film called Story of Wealth and I was hired to do the DP work for this interview as well as something else later on this month. But um, just wanted to just walk through the production side of um, how I achieved this look um, using two different types of cameras and matching them. Uh, it won't be too in depth because I don't have a laptop, I have my iPad. So what you see here is gonna be like a split screen as I'm walking through this. Um, real quick, I also wanna say this is not the final grade. I don't know what it's gonna look like as they're editing this. I, I was just hired to film it. This was a quick 25 minute touch up to match the two cameras as close as possible without really doing like major tweaking or anything like that. So I'm happy how it turned out. This was shot with the Zcam E2 F6. That's my camera as well as the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. That's my other camera I had. Um, both were using Zeiss glass. So the Zcam, the wide shot, which we see here. So this wide shot here was shot with the Zcam. Um, and then the Z cam with the 21 millimeter lens on it, the Zeiss Distagon lens. And then this tight shot was the, the 85 uh, 1.4 Zeiss planar lens. Um, no filtration, no NDs. Um, I, both sh I shot both cameras at high ISO. So they are both at roughly 25 ISO respectively. The native, dual native ISO for the Z cam is 2500 ISO. Um, the Black Magic Pocket is it's at 1250, but I boosted it just to get the same light levels on that. So that's the technical thing out the way. So let's just actually just talk about the lighting. Very simple, very easy. Um, how I lit this, um, we shot this in the home of the professor. So as you see, we're dining room, living room area. Um, and as we got there, we had about less than an hour to set up. When that happens, you need to be kind of quick. I didn't see, I think I saw one image of the space before I got there. Um, so I had to just think very quickly of how color works, what do we want in the background, etc., etc. I have my Aperture 120D um, as the main light. And what I like to do with this light is I put an extra diffusion. Um, so underneath it is a egg crate grid. Um, that helps again with like spill this makes it a little bit more direction but i find find that still too harsh so then i have a white muslim and it's a much more warmer tone um and i put that over top and that significantly cuts down the light so that's about almost a probably a stop and a half or so um sorry a full stop cut down and so um with this setup this 300x i changed my my temperature down to around um 4600 kelvin i want to warm up this scene a little bit um for that look i didn't want to have daylight because daylight wouldn't make sense in internally um, what i did use was this window over here we had these shears closed because we didn't want the street to be too busy uh and distracting but it did have some blue coming in so in the back here all the way in tucked in this corner is my 120d now i didn't have like a snoot or anything for like a hair light but let me turn this layer off um as you can see here in this main shot there is some kick and what i did was i had some gaff tape so i had my regular you know the regular reflector that sits on front of the, the light i just put some gaff tape on here and made a slit and so i learned that little trick when i was doing photography studio photography if I want to kind of shape and direct the light a little bit more if you don't have like a true modifier. So gaff tape it and I left this little slit where the light could kind of shoot out of. And so that's what you're kind of seeing hit here. Now I wish I did a little bit more finessing. Um, it's a little too harsh for me and I could have turned it down a little bit more or softened it a little bit, but this allowed some separation and just like some subtle blue light to mix with this scene as you saw from the wide shot because that wide shot was kind of giving a bluish tone here so um and it gave it a little bit of separation that was nice um overall too we have this little practical in the back um i could have turned that down as well but again i was kind of rushing and we liked how it looked straight up the bat it's a little hot um and we could have turned that down if i did have more time like two hours or so i would have took some um nd nd here and just ended down nd did down to um to get a little bit more balance there but it gave again some more separation from 
uh, the background. Uh, one of my least favorite areas that I did not <laughs> work on as, as, as much as I should have was this couch. And I'm gonna point it out because I'm not always a set designer and it would be nice to have a third eye to, not a third eye, but a third person to look at that. And we would have fixed up that, that little cushion there and moved this over here. Yeah, this painting here works really well. Um, and it's, it's a nice cutaway too. It's a nice little object to look at too. It's not too distracting in my opinion. When we cut away to this tight shot, it helps like this nice natural color contrast with her skin and everything. So, oh man, I drew on this too. Well, I just ruined that image. That's fine. That is fine. A lot of you guys are asking me what audio I was using. I use my trusty um, uh, Rode NTG3 condenser shotgun mic uh, hooked up to my Zune uh h6 um kevin here this is the director he's listening to the audio we got as close as possible because that wide angle was pretty wide and now i was shooting in 4k dcr for both uh, cameras uh, but it's still a little bit wider obviously with the 24 mil on that and then yeah i mean outside of that there wasn't really too much that we changed uh, we made sure all the extra lights were off in the kitchen and stuff like that so we only had lights in that little nook area that sitting room area to control it um some of the things i think i would have done slightly different again you can kind of see some of this light hitting her thigh here it's a little bit of blue light there um again i wish it would have kind of softened it a little bit more um, I would like to have this light a little bit closer because the closer the light, the more you can kind of turn it down, but it's just softer and a softer wrap that it gives. Um, it's a much more pleasing look, but um, since he was wearing glasses, I did my best to avoid um, having the reflection in her eye as much as possible. So having the right angle is really important. And I never shoot or I never point the light directly at my talent. I always feather it a little bit. Um, it creates less hot spots. Now I didn't refine it as much as I should have for that second angle. Let me turn it on here. You can still see some hot spots on her face, but um, it's not terrible, I would say. Can I erase this? No. Forgive me, I'm learning how to do this on the iPad right now as I do this. But um, yeah, that's, I don't have to talk anymore from that. That was the breakdown, nothing um, too crazy. Having more time is always gonna be a benefit. And so um, once you land on the, it took us like 20 minutes to land on, this is the this is the angle we wanna film at. And then now you have to rush to kind of get everything up and make sure it's dialed in. So um, more time is always great, but we didn't have that luxury. Um, but if this is beneficial for you, I didn't do much, nothing too crazy. I just stay true to some of the key principles that I know. Um, if you can get the light as close as you can to your subject and then feather it, it's gonna give a nice pleasing look. Um, especially if you're trying to have glasses, make sure it's at the right angle so they won't hit um, the glasses, you won't see the reflections. And then using the second light to help separate. Um, it's not much, it's not so apparent in this wide shot, but if you cut to that second angle, you can definitely see that it helps um, get some separation or just kind of motivates whatever practicals or extra light or window that you have in the background, which was this sort of a blue tinted um, blue light from the outside from that cloudy day that we had. Um, and definitely take an overall look at the scene. So if you want to change something like a cushion, couch, make sure no C-stand or anything like that is in the shot. Take a second if you can do that. I wish I would have did that with this scene here, but it is what it is. Cool. All right. That's it. Bye. <laughs>